Thank you. Yeah. Um, to be honest, uh, I do not claim that I have all the answers about this. I just hope that I will be able to say a few words that might inspire people so that they can also do something to make this uh, happen. Because what is the issue? Well, if, if you look around, look, look around now a little bit, please. This is what you looked like four years ago. Can anyone see the difference? The only difference, I think, is that everybody became eight years older. <laughs> For the rest, everything is still the same. Now, well, it's not, not completely the same, but the, the issue is we want to find younger people who want to be in our community and whom we want to trust to give them configure or enable access on our, uh, on our AS. And how, how should we do that? Um, we, yeah, if, if we stay like this, then in four more years, we will all have grown eight more years older and it will still look the same. Well, um, as many of you who know me a little bit uh, will already know, and others uh, have obviously already inferred from my athletic posture, I have been involved in competitive swimming for basically all my life. And if you ha look at how this is set up, there is this, this the, the bond, so basically the big union of all swimming clubs in the Netherlands, and they have a plan. They tell you that if today is 2022, and in the Olympics in 2036, we want to be there with eight swimmers, then until a year or, well, at any, we need to have 800 kids join a swimming club every year. And that is something like what is happening here. If you want to finally find that right talent to get your enable or configure access, depending on your favorite brand of router, then we need to get into this right now and get many people interested in what it actually is that we do. Now, fortunately, I don't think we have to do all of that ourselves. There are great schools that have IT departments where students can learn about anything IT. Um, I think many of them choose things like game design or uh, business something or other. We need to be sure that they get into networking as well. Well, uh, what I do myself is obviously, as you all know, I'm the owner of Fusix. This mess here is one project that a, a stagiaire, an intern, once did for us. He was trying to find the right router to use in a certain project. And that was his internship. It worked. And we basically still, for this kind of purpose, use the same kind of router that he researched. So that's good. And we had other interns. But all, there has almost not been a time in Fusix when there has not been an intern. So this guy was at an HBO level. Uh, we had a guy at MBO level. And for him, it was more like learning how to, how to work so that you have to get to an office every day and that you have to interact with people, that sort of stuff. And we got him interested in, in Linux. And in the end, he made his own Minecraft server and all his friends were jealous. So goal was met. And we had another intern who built a substantial system for us. And uh, that was at HBO level at the time. The guy also has his uh, masters now, and we hired him again for a new project just now because we are so happy with them. And I would like to urge you, if you have the possibility in your company, take those interns because they can really do a good job. I admit they can also not do a good job, but it's up to you to get them to do the good job. And it costs you some time, it costs you some money, but you do get results from it. Please do it. Another thing that I personally do, and I took this from the website of the uh, Hogeschool van Amsterdam, is that I act as like uh, yeah, an extern deskundige. So when there is a new student who needs to uh, graduate, then uh, I join the session. I, I read the uh, thesis beforehand, maybe usually twice, just to make sure. 
uh, I jot down some notes and during the session I will ask some questions and basically confirm to the, to the school that the whole thing is up to modern industry standards. And this is a few times a year and it costs you a few hours per session. Uh, you learn something about a subject that you may not be dealing with every day, but you do learn about it. And it even gets me some business every now and then with the company that the people uh, worked for. And I also meet Frans there every now and then, so that's also a good thing. One more thing I wanted to mention before I give the floor to Frans is that um, you guys are here today, which we all love and appreciate. But I am a little bit afraid that many of you have had to take a day off to be here. It is something that I read in IRC, it's something that I hear from people. You know, the first NL NOC day ever in 2014 or 15 was uh, on a Saturday because we wanted to be sure that everybody could make it. But by now, I think it is more professional, though I still hear that many people have to take a day off in order to be able to visit this day, so that's why I have a holiday picture here. Um, we hope that this is not going to be necessary. The only thing that we have done about that so far is that we have a page on the website that explains why you should attend the NLNOC day. Um, I would just like to ask if there is more that you think that we can do in order to make more yeah, new people show up to this day, then please uh, do let us know, because we do feel that this is important. Um, this is basically what I wanted to say, just a few small things of, that I do that might serve as an inspiration for all of you. Um, Frans has taken it up uh, uh, quite a bit, because, uh, uh, yeah, well, he can say it himself, but it's not just that he acts as uh, the externe deskundige at HBO's, but he's basically just built his own school. <laughs> Frans de Borg. So good afternoon. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I quite agree with, with Niels. Um, I, I have put in a lot of effort, um, but it hasn't just been me. Um, so I'm Frans de Borg. Um, I'm uh, the founder of Kwanzaa. Uh, which is a company that designs, builds, and operates uh, networks and server infrastructures in societally relevant environments. Um, we run the NOC for the M6, we run the SURF network operationally, um, and uh, operate the network for the GVB, the uh, Amsterdam Municipal Network, amongst others. Um, some time ago, about seven years, I was asked to join the board of ISP Connect which is, uh, or was, uh, an industry as association for uh, hosting and cloud companies. Um, not because we run our own cloud, because, but because we, uh, yeah, I, I know a lot about the industry and I thought I could be helpful. At some point, um, uh, we uh, were discussing the influx of um, new personnel. Seven years ago, it was a problem as well. Um, and um, I raised my hand uh, when uh, the question was asked, who wants to uh, be involved in, in this project? Um, what happened is we, we ran into um, a gentleman, uh, Marcel Schilders, who had been involved in um, setting up, uh, a, we call it dual uh, uh, educations. Um, in his past, it was mostly around construction, um, and, and engineering uh, civil projects. Um, but he was keen on getting involved in the IT industry as well. Um, and we created a foundation, the Cloud IT Academy. Um, because we said, okay, we want to make sure that we start an influx of new blood, if you wish, uh, into uh, our community. Um, and um, um, yeah, how better to do that than to get people from schools to join, uh, rather than just fish in the same pond, um, bid up against each other and, and make, well, a lot of problems. Um, where we are now, um, so the, the program's been running, uh, we're in the fifth year. Um, we currently have 
135 students in the program that work at 60 uh, cloud and hosting companies, uh, some in infrastructure companies like ourselves, um, who are working their way up from the MBO level, which I think translates into secondary vocational education, um, level four education. Um, that's where we recruit them. Um, we recruit them at MBOs. Um, and a lot of these MBO students, they're not sure what to do as a next step. Um, HBO, another four years of, of studying um, uh, sort of deters them. They don't really want to get into that um, immediately, at least not all of them. Um, they want to work. However, they also say, maybe I want to get that next paper, um, uh, that, that next diploma, um, and um, how can we sort of combine that? So what, what we did is we, we did a search. Um, we went to uh, some bachelor level education uh, institutions like the Hogeschool van Amsterdam, uh, who said, well, we already have 1,100 students starting each year. We don't even know where to put them. Um, and we are happy that in January, 50% um, will have quit, uh, so, that we at <laughs> so that we have a spot for them in the, in the classrooms. Um, so they didn't, they didn't want to um, join forces. Rotterdam, uh, they didn't have the money nor the teachers. Um, but when we went to Utrecht, um, which accidentally is a very central place, which made our lives easy in, in a lot of other aspects, they said, what a good idea. We want to invest money in this. We have teachers, we have money. Um, please go on and, and set this up. Um, so what we're doing from, uh, from the foundation, uh, from CETA, um, is we are, as I said, recruiting students um, at the MBOs. We do that by um, going into the MBOs um, at, at fixed times, especially around the times when uh, the students are looking for either internships or when they're close to finishing their studies um, and, and, and want to decide on the next step. So we go to around uh, approximately 30 uh, MBO institutions, um, give um, well, lectures about the CETA offering, uh, about the companies that we, that we work with, uh, to try and uh, make these students um, uh, join, uh, join our program. Um, and, and when they uh, tell us that they are interested, we go and introduce them to the companies from our um, community. Um, so, yeah, doing that, we, we look at the region where the students come from. Uh, we try to find a company somewhere in the, uh, in the neighborhood. Our, our sort of area that we cover is about a 100 kilometer radius around uh, Utrecht, because that's where the students sort of have to go for their studies. Um, the whole thing is, the study is dual. So the students work three days a week in a, in a professional environment. Um, they go to school one day a week, um, and they do one day of self-study. Um, this requires quite a bit from the companies as well. Um, the, the companies have to sort of make sure that there is work that is appropriate to the task to, uh, to make sure that they can get their study points. Then as the foundation, we coach the students on the job, we coach the um, uh, people in the companies that guide the students. Um, and it, well, again, as I said, it's, it's a very successful program so far. Um, as I said, 34 MBO locations that we do. Um, there are more in the Netherlands, but um, simply the, the travel time to, uh, to Utrecht for the students is, is a thing that we take into account. So we don't restrict students coming from further away, uh, but it's just impractical. Um, so we try to make them move if they really want to join. Um, the population that we're looking at is about 3,000 MBO level students, uh, level four students, um, that we try to reach every year. Um, and roughly 200 students express an interest, uh, leading to roughly 75 to 100 sort of actual en uh, encounters. And this year we started with probably 60 new students um, in, the, in the program. Um, and we're aiming for 75 new students next year. The study in Utrecht is the um, 
uh, what, what used to be called SNE, System and Network Engineering, which was later rebranded as a, a very hip and cool studies, uh, Cybersecurity and Cloud, which is essentially still the same study. Uh, <laughs> but um, perhaps with a little bit more focus on, uh, on cybersecurity and cloud. From our um, community, we, we are able to influence the, um, the class content. Um, I think that we're probably within the Netherlands uh, the most current um, bachelor education, which is most in line with whatever is happening in, uh, in the rest of the world, uh, or at least in our world. Um, specifically, an example for uh, ROC Midden Nederland, um, which is, happens to be close to, uh, to the uh, Hogeschool Utrecht. So yeah, we give guest lectures um, for the students. Um, some of the companies from our um, from our community give uh, um, uh, lectures, or it's me or our director. Um, we have a CV generator that helps the students to yeah, present themselves to uh, interested companies, um, and we do matching, arrange for uh, interviews and what have you. Um, Again, we, we coach the students on the job uh, for four times a year. Um, they have a talk with one of our coaches um, and, and we look at how we can make their learning experience as, as best as possible. Um, so this is an actual bachelor. Um, it takes four years. Um, so it, it, it requires quite a bit of effort from both the student, but also from the company who needs to Give the yeah, handle the student and, and give him space to actually finish their studies. Um, we're continuously fine-tuning the program, um, but things are going, again, really well. Um, I'll skip this, because we are also close to lunch. Um, some, some practicalities. Um, if we recruit a student, we promise the student that the company that we will place him at, uh, will pay for his tuition if he does um, attain the 50 sort of study points credits. Um, and we re re that the student will also be reimbursed for his books and whatever other uh, training materials. Um, we also ask and promise to the student that uh, he will get a four-year contract and a salary. We give some guidance on uh, how high the salary could be. Um, and that the company will give him room uh, to actually do his studies. Um, there's also a three-party contract involved uh, there. Um, some other numbers, because I'm also sort of trying to yeah, get you in. We charge from CETA a, a 3,500 euro fee per student per year uh, for, actual, for, for the actual coordination um, and a yearly membership um, uh, of 1,000 euros. Um, and most of that can be retrieved from the RVO um, through a subsidy praktijkleren, leren, but the actual number for the subsidy differs per year, so I can't make any promises that you will actually get everything back. Um, some timelines. By now, we will be starting uh, the recruitment of interns at MBOs. Essentially, as a sort of trial, um, you can define internship projects uh, for MBO level students, MBO uh, level four students, um, and sort of try out a student for a while. And we will try to make that uh, a student interested in joining the program at the start of the next school year, which is, will be in September uh, 2023. Um, so the actual recruitment for this internship is happening now, and, and it will be January, February, uh, that the actual internships will start. Um, again, for the tryout of the student. I mean, you don't know what you'll find, um, uh, and, and perhaps you will decide, okay, hey, this guy isn't just cut. Uh, this, this isn't the good sort of character, I don't know. Um, but hopefully you'll find someone that, that fits your culture. Um, and then from March next year, um, when the students are actually really finishing their studies. Some of them uh, may not 
have heard from our program yet, or um, sometimes they um, are at a an internship that they don't want to stay at. Um, so we'll we'll engage again. Uh, we'll find students um, uh, for uh, joining the program, and we'll match them with um, job positions that you have published. And we hope to start again with with 75 students next year. So this is for CSC, Cybersecurity and Cloud, um, and and since. Two years, and next year it will be the third year. We also have the same program for software development students, um, which is somewhat less successful, but we started in COVID time, so we're hoping that next year we'll have really picked up um, and that we'll be at sort of the same levels um, with, with 40 to 50 students joining. This is the uh, bachelor sort of program, the topics that they'll learn, but it's, it's dynamic. Um, so there's organization, there, there's stuff about compute, about operating systems, there's stuff about networks, which is clearly uh, more why we're here today, but I think it's, it's, most of the students will fit in organizations, in most of your organizations. Um, and it's also good to sort of know more than the network. Uh, it's always good to know what is connected to your network, how to deal with security and, and stuff like that. Um, so I'd like to invite you to uh, if you're interested in, in joining the program, uh, either reach out to me or uh, to our director, who is normally who, who would have normally been here, but she's attending a wedding in Italy. Um, uh, reach out to us. Um, we can provide you with more information. Um, clearly, this is only for the Netherlands. Um, it, it's about the Hogeschool Utrecht, um, but perhaps this will inspire you if you're based in a different country to set up something similar. Any questions? Any short questions, please? Yes, darling. Um, for one, we all know women tend to have a lot of interest in learning technology before they're 14. So when you are in the MBO, the interest of women deteriorates. So I have two questions. One for you and one for Niels. For wh uh, what are you doing to get the attention of the young girls? And two, when are we going to have a kids' day and Elmok day? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not shitting. My little girl actually asked me this morning, I want to go. And I told her no, because she's 11, but she's already really interested. And if I can get her into networking, that would be an awesome opportunity. That is a great idea, and we will take it on. Thank you. Um, yeah, to, to address your question, um, I think it, it's a very fair question. Um, when the foundation was started, we had limited means. Um, and and uh, in order to, to reach uh, a certain audience and have success pretty quickly after, um, we thought that the MBO4 students would be the best way to start, and it, it has worked for us. Um, it's still so that we don't have a lot of money as a foundation. Um, and in order to reach the 14-year-olds, we have to sort of go from 30 MBO education uh, institutions to uh, probably several hundreds of uh, half of MBO, half of MBO. I can get uh, you one already to start with, a primary yeah. school in yes. the neighborhood. Just try a version there, and maybe you will get some success in moving into MBO half of. What, what, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to get subsidies more funding from the government as well, who are seeing that this program is actually working. We're being mentioned as an example um, at VNO NCW, for example, uh, which helps us in, in attract extra funding uh, and grow the organization to get a better reach. But yeah, you're right, it's, it's a slow process. If I can help. Yeah. An excellent prequel talk to my 2019 talk. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I notice, looking through the slides, that there was only one woman pictured. She was pictured twice, so it's plausible she's got a twin sister on the course. But what is your gender makeup uh, of the 135? Because 67 and a half should be women. What have you got? We're, um, again, here um, dependent on what the MBO supplies um, from the um, guest lectures that we give. Um, I think that there are probably six or seven ladies in the program uh, out of 135 at the moment. Um, and that, that sort of, 
yeah, we should go back to your, uh, uh, to the other lady that was just asking the questions. We should make sure, all of us, um, that we get more ladies interested, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you, Frans. Yep. We, we have a present for you, ah. as we do for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I gave only a small presentation, so I get a small present. <laughs>